Well, let's hear the Fernando Tetsis Jr. home run because that's that's one of the things I wanted to talk about. One of the two observations I had from last night's game. This is bottom of the fourth inning, scoreless still. And Fernando Tetsis Jr. on his bobblehead night up at the plate against Michael Lorenzen. So submitted. Ooh. Great play. Ooh. And Ooh. nobody going to catch Tony this Jr. one. Ooh. Fernando Ooh. launching to left field, deep into the second deck, deep into the night. And the Padres take a one nothing lead here in the fourth. So that's Fernando's, what, third home run in the last five days, I think, second day in a row that he's gone deep, 23rd of the season. Ooh. And it had been uh, it had been in a stretch where obviously the power so numbers Ooh, great. there it is. Ooh, uh, Ooh. Had, had gone down a little bit. Ooh. I thought what Bob Melvin said after the game, I think we, we have some of this as well, about Fernando Tatis Jr.'s season and what the plan had been for him and what – it actually happened, the expectations versus the reality. And here's what Bob had to say after the game last night about Fernando Tatis Jr. You know what, it's just ebbs and flows of the season. You know, if you really look, and I had this conversation with him the other day, you know, he missed a year plus. He's got two surgeries. He's playing a new position. He's playing every single day. I did not intend to play him every day. I was really hoping for maybe 10 games and one off, that type of thing for him. But the position we were in, you know, from the very beginning, and as athletic as he is, how well he was playing in right field, it was hard to give him days off. So I think, you know, you'll see who he is, different spurts, but this this probably wasn't going to be a perfect year for him to begin with. Um, but I'm really pr- proud of the way he's gone about it and has been as durable as he has and gone through some some tough periods with his head up and continues to play hard. I will say that uh, I will be in, in full agreement with Bob Melvin. I have been... Massively, massively impressed with Fernando Tatis Jr. this season. Um, have there been times, Ben, where, you know, he looks a little downtrodden? Sure. Slumping is awful. And and it's really hard to hold your head high when you're not helping your team win baseball games. And when you're swinging at bad pitches, pitches that you know better, um, when you're trying to do too much, think about, think about a... You know, the position he put himself in. Think about, again, the, the the surgeries that he got. And then think about the entire, like, I have now have to get off the dirt. I've got to go to the outfield. I've got to learn right field. i got to learn those angles, those routes. And he's just getting better and better and better and better at that. Um, he's really played himself into one of the best right fielders in the game of baseball. And really... Haven't heard a damn thing about him, dude, as far as, as he has played played up to the fans. He has taken all the, the barbs thrown his way. Um, I'm really impressed with Fernando Tatis Jr. this year. He's been pretty quiet. You know, you don't you don't hear a lot from him. Seemingly pretty positive. Um, you know, we're not in there every day, so we don't know exactly the dynamic in the clubhouse. But just as a, you know, fairly outsider's perspective, just massively impressed with him this year. Thought there, thought the, the, the numbers yeah. could be I, better, I, but, you know. I know. Well, I agree, but I thought there were a couple of interesting things from what Bob said. First of all, that's a quote that you're not going to hear in March or April, that we actually did have somewhat moderate expectations. I mean, high because he's Fernando Tetsis Jr., but we were going to be careful, conservative. We weren't going to expect too much in this season after he had missed more than a full year of baseball and was switching his positions and really, we wanted to get him more rest than we were able to get him through the year. That we weren't thinking, oh, okay, he's going to come right back and be Tatis instantly. We knew that this was going to be a process throughout the season. You never hear that in spring training. But that had to be what the Padres were thinking back then. Now, I don't, you know, momentum is not a thing in baseball. Not game to game. Not even at bat to at bat, really. But I do think confidence is important. And what I'm seeing from Fernando Tatis Jr., that confidence that he should be able to take going into next year. Health, confidence in a position, assuming he's still out in the outfield. Now, maybe he's switching over to center, but just the the feeling will be completely different, and I do expect uh, an even much better year next year, and I think we're seeing some of the glimpses of it the last few days of what maybe the real Fernando Tatis Jr. will look like. Not that the one we got this year was bad at all. Still pretty great player, even, you know, coming off of that long layoff from what we've seen this year. But next year could be pretty special and spectacular. And quite frankly, the Padres will need it to be to get where they really wanted to go. He's going to have to really step it up next year. But he's in the position, I think, 
where you would want him to be, finishing up this season hopefully strong, healthy, and going into next year with a ton of confidence that 2024 is really going to be you know, maybe a signature kind of year for Fernando Tatis Jr. Well, while I'll always disagree with you on momentum isn't real in baseball because I have always felt and will always feel that hitting is absolutely contagious, and that is the definition of momentum. I do feel like there are times, uh, not for us as Padre fans and the Padres themselves, there are times when teams, like, can't wait to get to the ballpark because they know they're going to steamroll you. You know, that, that to me is momentum. That means no one can beat us. Like, we're, we're going to go rip off 10, 12 in a row, and there's nothing anybody can do to stop it. So I, I do believe in, in momentum. I also believe in negative momentum as well, deep momentum, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that, that is definitely a thing where you're like, oh, I don't want to be here. This sucks, and he didn't get a knock, and I'm not going to get a knock, and everyone's kind of half-assing it. Um, I think, you know, for Fernando, just keep doing what you're doing. Like, you don't have to change really anything. You're you're good. Um, if they make him switch positions again, yeah, we've seen him in center field a little bit. It's not great, but it also wasn't great in spring training. I have no, no doubt that that man could do anything on the diamond um, that they needed him to do. So I I am very impressed with, with what he's done, and I've – there's few things greater to me than when he absolutely gets a hold of one, as he did last night. I mean, he hits. Think about how many he's been shortchanged on this year. So many that he that he should have had, you know, those warning tracks. There was that stretch of, like, five games in a row where he hit one to the wall. They're asking us in the uh, chat, too, about dead balls. It's funny. We were talking about, and I see a lot of the dead ball conspiracy going on on Twitter um, every night.